It's about the story of the Scottsboro Boys, uh, these nine African-American boys who were falsely accused of raping these uh, two white prostitutes in 1931. And uh, we kind of tell the story uh, kind of through a, a vaudeville format. We started this two years before Fred died, and he died in 2004, and we started in 2002. The story itself is so heartbreaking. And, and yet so important that the Scotch Bull Boys kind of got lost in, in the public memory. And we found ourselves wanting to tell it, and we didn't know how until we finally found a form. I like it because it's candor and air. I like it because it's a minstrel. And it uh, goes deeper than just talking about the Scottsboro Boys. It, it tells a lot of the things that contributed to the terrible ordeal that they went through. It's a very American story and it's a very American art form and putting those two things together I think is um, makes it uh, makes it possible you know there's only one way you can sometimes tell an American story is is through things that we all understand and, and appreciate and the musical form is that it can it can take you anywhere. I was surprised to hear that there was a musical on this subject matter at all but uh, when I heard that it was Kendra and Ebb, I mean, that, that makes more sense because they are known for taking darker subject matter or darker subject matter and turning it into uh, both an entertainment but also a lesson. It's Kendra and Ebb. It, it's just absolutely, absolutely uh, moving, to tell you the truth. The music is hard to describe. I mean, it, it, it's very time specific, so there are elements of, of, of ragtime and early jazz and. Uh, and, and some of the European influences as well, but I mean, Kanda wrote some very beautiful music this time around. I know that Fred Ebb said, unless we make this story entertaining, no one will listen. So it was very important to find a device to put this story in. Now, the Scottsboro Boys is a very racist uh, story, and, and so is a minstrel show. In a minstrel show, you're allowed to tell stories, you're allowed to sing songs. Uh, you have a couple of guys called the End Men, who tell jokes, uh, it, it gives you an ultimate flexibility. And uh, once we decided on that form, uh, the whole thing began to fall into place. I have actually done two other minstrel shows, so one of the things that I enjoy the most really is the minstrel form and the fact that Coleman and I get to do so much in the vaudeville aspect. I think there's some magic and so theatrical that we're playing all the characters, that Kander and Ebb and Susan Stroman made sure it was put into the hands of the boys for them to tell their story in this minstrel structure. Um, and I think, it's, I think it's powerful and I really hope that people really take to it and really see it for what it is, you know? These boys are really talented, but they also have a kind of a deep, deep commitment and dedication to this, this not just this play, but to what this play means. The cast are so invested in telling this story. I don't think I've ever experienced something like that where it's so important for them to tell this story. Oh boy, uh, they just kill me. I, 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 I wish I had the words to, to tell you what an extraordinary bunch of people they are and what a mission that has, this has become for them. Uh, I'll never forget this. It's one of those things where you hope at the end of the evening you've been entertained, not the, unlike the way Cabaret will, will entertain you, but at the, end of the, at the end of the show will also make you think about things in a different way. So that's, that's, that's where we started and I, and I hope that's what the audience takes away with it.